Our guest on This is America and the World is Lee Cushing. He currently serves as minister at the Embassy of the People's Republic of China in Washington. Minister Lee formerly served as Deputy Director General for the Department of International Economic Affairs for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and as Counselor to China's permanent mission to the United Nations. Minister Lee, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure to be here. Lots going on in Washington right now. What do you make of it all? A lot of fireworks. <laughs> Quite excitement. Uh, very exciting. I think so. How, uh, how is the government uh, in uh, Beijing reacting to the change of administrations? Well, the change of uh, administration is a natural process uh, in U.S. But uh, we do have our sincere, sincere hope to, uh, to see that uh, a good transition of the government and a uh, good track of uh, China-U.S. relations uh, to continue. This is our sincere hope. We have a lot going on here. What's going on back home? What, what, what should we know about what's happening in China? Oh, well, China is developing very fast. And uh, I think everybody in China is uh, working very hard to continue our uh, reform and opening up process and the development process. Uh, we are still a developing country, so we should uh, work very hard to keep pace of the world and to make our everyday life better. When you uh, use the word reform, wh wh what does that mean over there? Uh, it's, it's a multi-layer uh, uh, process. Uh, in the past 30 or 40 years, that the reform is about uh, half or half not at the beginning. And uh, at early 1980s, that the, the process of reform uh, the trajectory that make people uh, happy uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. But now we are, uh, are facing some difficulties. It's, 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 it's a very much uphill uh, process. So uh, we are undertaking structural reform at this moment. It's much more difficult than the uh, reform in the 80s and 90s. So uh, we're trying to change the form of our development uh, process is more uh, environmental uh, friendly, more innovation processed, is more uh, a balanced process. So it's very hard, but we uh, have very confidence to make it happen. A uh, huge middle class now, huh? That's been brought along over the past, what, 20 years or so? More, 20 or 30 years, huh? It's growing very fast. Uh, 1.3 billion people uh, with a goal to eliminate poverty uh, over the next, what, 10 or 20 years, huh? Well, we have an uh, initial uh, um, uh, goal uh, in 2020. 2020. Where, yeah, we're going to eliminate the last batch of 60 million people in poverty. But this is a very large number for us, and uh, we are determined to do that. It's ever the first time to completely eliminate the poverty in China. How about, uh, what would you say are the great successes of China, and what are the great challenges? Well, in the past few decades, we made great process. We eliminate about 700 million people uh, in, in poverty. Mm -hmm. That's a great success. But at the same time, we make a great contrib contribution to the world economy. Mm -hmm. Still, we're making 25% contribution to the world economy in total. I think that's the, uh, uh, the biggest contribution we make for the world economy. We have challenges here. What are your challenges at home? I think st the biggest challenge is still the development. Development. It's around, all around development. We're still a developing country. I'm talking about this in a very serious manner. Mm -hmm. We are number two in total in world economy but the per capita income is still pretty low. Mm -hmm. It's around the 80s in the world. Our per capita income is something like one-seventh of USA uh -huh. standard. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have a long way to go. Uh -huh. um, when you um, uh, look at Asia, uh, what do you see? I would say I see good neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a long history of a good neighborly relationship with China. 
and I do see a huge potential of cooperation with these countries. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be uh, uh, especially true of uh, what would you say the relationship is with Japan and also with uh, uh, South Korea, huh? Uh, Japan, for us, we do have uh, enjoyed very long, good relationship with the country. We did have some unpleasant experience in the past, especially during the World War II. Mm. But the key thing is that for the Japanese government, is they should look at the history in a very uh, objective way. I think that's very important for the improvement of China Japan relations. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, uh, it, it was serious, very serious uh, 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 conflict there and uh, 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 more than unpleasant, huh? It's, 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 uh, I would say sometimes it's pretty serious. Mm -hmm. uh, in the history, especially during the Second World War, mm -hmm. uh, we had a very sad experience with Japan. Mm -hmm. But Chinese people tend to be forgiving. Uh, Do you find that as well true of the Japanese people? Well, we try to forgive, but it, we need, do need some excuse mm -hmm. for that. But uh, I don't see that the uh, Japanese government is giving that excuse for us. Uh -huh. So, uh, for example, the Prime Minister of Japan visited the, uh, Hawaii recently. Mm -hmm. I think the most needed places that he wants, he needs to uh, visit is Nanjing mm. in China. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think would be accomplished by a visit there? Well, we would like to see a sincere apology mm -hmm. from the Japanese uh, leader. That it will create a good condition for the future China-Japan relations. Mm. How about the relationship between, uh, say, uh, China and uh, and South Korea? How how, how is that s uh, s stacking up? We established uh, diplomatic relations in 1992. Mm -hmm. Since then, we do enjoyed very good um, uh, relationship with with the country. Mm -hmm. uh, the mutual trade is growing very fast. People to people exchange. Uh, growing very fast. Korean uh, culture is very popular in China. But we do have some uh, political concerns and security concerns uh, with the country. Uh, for example, the, the third uh, missile system to be deployed in the country. That mm -hmm. will be uh, very detrimental to uh, the regional uh, security and detrimental to our bilateral relationship. So, so uh, China is not thrilled with having that uh, missile system at its uh, at its doorstep, huh? No, uh, we don't think so. No. Um, how <clears throat> about um, Taiwan and Hong Kong? When we talk about, well, let me go sideways for a second and tell me uh, one China policy and how does that relate to Taiwan and Hong Kong? Well, one China policy is the basis. That uh, for our relationship with uh, other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, there is uh, tons of uh, literature mentioning about the, uh, Taiwan is part of uh, China. Mm -hmm. But nationally, I think the Chinese people recognize that the people in mainland and Taiwan formulate the one China. Mm -hmm. And uh, internationally, we do have the uh, multilateral and uh, bilateral uh, treaty with the uh, UN, with other major countries, like the uh, uh, 2758 resolution in the UN uh, Assembly, and uh, our three communiques with uh, American government. They all stipulate one China policy. I think that's the basis for our bilateral relations with U.S. and as it's the basis for us to dealing with Taiwan. Uh, let us take a little break. Uh, we're talking uh, with Minister Li uh, from the Embassy of the People's uh, Republic of uh, China, and we're uh, very uh, honored to have you with us today. Take a little break. Back on the other side, this is America and the World. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. 
The League of Arab States representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. When uh, President-elect Trump uh, made the call to the president of uh, Taiwan, or the other way around, however it happened, uh, Beijing was not uh, pleased with that at all, huh? They, they uh, considered it a, a, an affront in a way, huh? Help, help us understand uh, why that call was not received so well. It's actually not, not only well received, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty annoying because that the one China policy is the basis for China-US relations. We dealt with the uh, eight presidents in the past, and we do have the three communiques uh, for our bilateral relationship. I think this basis for one China policy is the key for us to continue our relationship. So this call is, uh, is, is pretty annoying, and uh, we hope that this uh, move will not happen again in, in the future. Uh, I want to zero in on this because it's important for, for me to understand and for our viewers to understand. When you say that the one China policy is the basis of the relationship between the United States and uh, the People's Republic, uh, that statement is a very simple statement and very declarative statement. Uh, we have a president-elect. Uh, who has already signaled that maybe the one China policy is a thing of the past. Uh, he has also said uh, uh, China is the enemy. Uh, uh, during the, uh, during the uh, campaign, he would say that China doesn't play by the rules. How do you put all of that together? And uh, what are the risks if he proceeds down the path of bringing Taiwan and the United States closer together and putting the People's Republic off to the side? Well, I think we need to firstly define the, the status of the relationship between mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. and U.S. Yep, good. I would say this is the most important bilateral relations in the world. There are different terms on that. You mentioned friend, enemy, mm -hmm. maybe competitor that the Bob Zollick used the word uh, stakeholder. That's, mm. that's a very, very mm. good one. But I think the, uh, the important concept is that we try to advocate for a long time that the, the new model of a major country relationship that features non-conflicting, non-confrontation, mm -hmm. mutual respect, and mutual benefit, and win-win cooperation. I think if we stick to these keys for our bilateral relationship, relationship we will certainly overcome these obstacles all the time. Uh, uh, but Minister, uh, with respect, and, and I understand what you're saying, and, and I, uh, some of the people here in the United States are concerned about uh, uh, President-elect uh, Trump's uh, unpredictability. And uh, so, so back in Beijing or at the embassy here in Washington, uh, I'm sure that people are concerned about that unpredictability, aren't they? Well, whoever takes the office in the Oval Office in the White House, that is, is, is decided about the American people. So uh, we observe this uh, campaign uh, very closely. Mm -hmm. Now Mr. Trump has become the uh, president-elect, and then we'll deal with, it, with him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a natural process. It's, uh, there may be so-called un predictability, mm -hmm. but I think that's, that's behave is more related on his, his behavior, his approach. The important thing is the policy that he's going to adopt, what kind of policy that his team is going to adopt. Mm -hmm. I think there should be a continuity of the, the past policies. I think most of the past policies are very healthy, 
very constructive uh, for the China-U.S. relations. China and the United States need each other, don't they? Very much so. Uh, and uh, there are, wh what would you say brings the two countries together and what pushes them apart? We've talked a little bit about what may push them apart or has pushed them apart. What brings them together? I think the mutual interest stick two countries together mm -hmm. very closely. We do have our close trade ties, investment ties. Mm -hmm. uh, up to today, we do have about 550 billion U.S. dollars for mutual trade mm -hmm. and 150 billion U.S. dollars for mutual investment. That's created a lot of jobs for mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And that's also very conducive to the stability uh, to the region, to the world. So it's the, the relationship between China and U.S. is not only for the two countries, it's for the region and also for the world. Uh -huh. um, when when you look at the fact that we've been around for 250 years or so, and China's been around for thousands and thousands of years, uh, is there some uh, looking at us as kind of the, like the new kid on the block? Uh, talking about this, maybe it's necessary to mention about some features of a Chinese uh, uh, culture that the, um, I think it's, it's important for our American friends to understand China uh, by knowing that we do have a long history, mm -hmm. it's more than 5,000 years. So Chinese people do have a historical perspective when they look at things. When they decide upon a project, they need to look at the, what's happened in the past mm -hmm. and what's the further steps to be taken after the project. So we, we try to look at things in totality, uh -huh. not a single out of one project itself. At the same time, we are proud of ourselves, but we are open to the outside world. Mm -hmm. China is a very patient country, aren't they? That's a characteristic of Chinese culture. They're very patient, huh? We are, we are patient, but at the same time, I would say that uh, in Chinese culture, the heart of Chinese culture comes from the concept of family. Family. Because it, the family concept is deep-rooted in the Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. In the family, that the youngers will show full respect to the older mm -hmm. and the exercise <coughs> filial piety. The olders will take care of the youngers. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in Chinese word, that the nation, Guojia, has one character of a family there. Mm. So in, in, in a nation building, we do have a family element in it. Uh -huh. But the, the key for this family building and nation building, there are also a good uh, concept of harmony, peace and harmony. Does that conflict with how you view the U.S. culture? Because individualism, family is important, but individualism is also part of our culture. So is there a cultural clash there? I don't think there's a, there's a clash between that. I think it is complementary with each other. Ah, good. And uh, we do have very good examples of a China-U.S. cooperation, individuals to individual cooperation, and company to company cooperation, mm -hmm. and our country to country relationship, our cooperation. So I think they are, they are very complementary with each other. President uh, Trump, uh, the president-elect, talks about a trade war. Uh, that has to bother uh, the government of, uh, of uh, the People's Republic quite a bit. Uh, what would the price of a trade war be for both countries? How would both countries, in your view, be hurt by a trade war? I don't think trade war is a good choice. And uh, uh, as we all know, that the trade plays a very important role for our two countries' people's benefit. Uh, for example, that China imports over 22% of U.S. cotton, 26% of Boeing airplanes, mm -hmm. and 50% of U.S. soybean. That create one million U.S. jobs. And we do have our investment here in U.S., this also creates, create a lot of jobs 
about 100,000 U.S. jobs here. So the trade and investment mutually is beneficial to U.S. citizens and is U.S. and is also uh, a good for the Chinese citizens. U.S. companies did the same thing in the past in China. They're still doing that. So welcome the U.S. investment there. The trade war is not a good choice. We have a trade deficit, though, with China, don't we? We do. Uh, it's, there is a different kind of interpreta interpretation of uh, statistics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 but, but trade is a, is, is a volatile process. Supposing the president-elect comes along uh, and through his uh, trade representatives and such uh, slaps some tariffs on Chinese goods, uh, uh, how will that hurt uh, both of the countries? Well, we'll be paying more, probably, for the, pro for the products, huh? Uh, I think every decision should be based on political political consideration as well as <coughs> market factors. If that decision really affects the American consumers, the American consumers will not agree with that. For example, if you go to the U.S. shops, you do find good, qualified Chinese products. But if you reach a tariff, and then how can the U.S. consumers enjoy these good products? Mm. So regarding this trade war business, what, do you, what, what are your hopes and what are your fears? Uh, we do have a, a strong hope for good communication between our two countries, our, our professional team and transition team at this moment. And after the uh, taking office, we'll deal with different departments uh, in the U.S. I don't think we do have fears for that. Mm. And uh, we did have up and downs uh, in, in the past, but we dealt with them. We, we do have the wisdom to deal with all these obstacles. The president's team is uh, his cabinet, a lot of uh, CEOs, a lot of businessmen, a lot of military people. Uh, do you expect a kind of, uh, does Beijing expect a hard line from the Trump administration toward China, at least at the beginning? I think the people's background uh, is different. I, th I think that's a good thing. We don't care about that, who, where they come from. We care about their policy they are going to take. Uh -huh. But uh, in the past, uh, for a few decades, that we dealt with different presidents, mm -hmm. but there is a strong consensus, bipartisan consensus, to develop good U.S.-China relations. I think that consensus should be continuing. Can uh, China help us with the, the DPRK, uh, North Korea? Can, 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 uh, will that be something that brings the two countries together to try to put a lid on that nuclear program and uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, instability? Well, DPRK is a, is a neighbor country for us, so we are very concerned about the uh, stability in the peninsula. Do you think he's stable? Well, I think they are, uh, uh, internally, I think it's quite stable mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in DPRK. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we are concerned is about the, the whole stability in the peninsula, because mm -hmm. the different factors are functioning in the, in the peninsula. So our position is the non-nuclearization uh, in the peninsula and non-instability in the peninsula. So we're trying very hard to, uh, to work with other countries, including U.S., mm -hmm. and other six-party talks uh, uh, members. So we advocate very strongly to come back to the negotiating table. The six-party talks, which was very effective in the past, is a good, is a good way out. Uh, if President-elect uh, Trump, uh, then President Trump, wanted to come to uh, China to pay a visit, would he be welcome? Very much so. Uh huh. And what would they talk about? What would be the agenda? I, I think that the, uh, the, the two leaders will have a very good talk. And uh, because there are so many I issues to address for them. Uh, and personally, I, I believe maybe the two leaders have their uh, personal chemistry with each other. Uh huh. We are at the end of our time. Do I remember correctly that? Uh, in Chinese uh, characters that uh, a crisis 
also has the reverse as an uh, 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 of opportunity, huh? Correct. Is that right? Yes. So, uh, so, so even though it, we might be having putting on our seat belts and parachutes, uh, we're going to hope for the best. Uh, I wouldn't say that there is a crisis now, <laughs> okay. but we do see uh, opportunities in front of us. Uh huh. Minister, thank you so much for the education, and thank you for coming by and talking with us today. Very pleased to be here. Thank you. For information about This is America and the World, and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. You can now listen to all of our ambassador interviews on our new podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services.